check this out. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 573. Today is Monday, so it's Update Monday, and today we're gonna talk about seed pods for freshwater aquariums. This year I have become totally obsessed with finding new pods to add to my aquariums and to add to my aquarium box. Now, I didn't realize how many different trees and seeds and seed pods there were in the world until I started this quest and it is absolutely amazing how many different types of seed pods can actually be used in an aquarium. I think a lot of people think about driftwood and aquascaping stone when they go to aquascape a tank and then they add the live plants and the fish and everything looks beautiful. But I think that biotope tanks, blackwater tanks, and tanks that just have more leaf litter and natural pods are becoming a lot more popular and I want to help introduce you guys to a bunch of pods today that you can use in your aquariums. Alright guys, we're going to take a look at a lot of these things, but before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and also if you want to help support this channel, you can go check out myaquariumbox.com. All right, guys, let's get started. Let's look at some seed pods together. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, guys, so here's the deal. We are gonna take a look at a lot of different seed pods. We're gonna look at them in their dry form. I'm gonna talk a little bit about them. Then, after we're done, we're gonna throw them all in an aquarium and see what they do. In fact, I have a lot of these that have been in my aquariums for over a month and so we can take a look at what they look like after they have been in a tank for a long time. I think it's important to see the before and after because some of these pods change when they get introduced to an aquarium. Some of them uh, are really good and durable. Others will break down over time and will need to be replaced. So I'm gonna start with one of my absolute favorites and this is a monkey pot or a monkey pod. This thing comes from Brazil, from the rainforest, and it's actually something which is harvested for food, and I believe uh, monkeys also uh, eat the fruit or the contents that are inside, and so that's sort of where they get their names. In the wild, you can actually find monkeys like chowing down on the contents of these things, I believe. Um, in any case, this is a very sturdy, a very woody type of pod. If you can see, the sidewall thickness is absolutely massive on these things. And these are really good size. These are like larger than coconut size, uh, like probably five to seven inches maybe in diameter. So really cool. They've got a nice pattern on the outside and the tops are all cut open like this because it's actually harvested for food and this is what's left over. This is sort of the waste product, the byproduct. And um, the biggest thing to watch out for with these things is when you submerge them in water, the insides get a little like jelly. Um, if you think of like a pumpkin, uh, you know, when you're scooping out a pumpkin, that's sort of what the inside of this pod turns into when you put it uh, back into water. And so what you want to do is probably boil this thing first, and then as the inside gets a little soft, you can just take like a spoon and sort of carve out the, uh, the soft material on the inside. And then you've got something that is very woody and will last for a very long time in your tanks. These things are beautiful. You can plant uh, like aquarium plants in these things. They act as a great cave. They act as a focal point in your freshwater aquascape tanks and they are just absolutely awesome. These are actually on their way from Brazil right now. They're being imported for us. So hopefully we'll see more of these in the very near future. Kind of hard to get your hands on and um, 
they're absolutely worth it. They are just totally stunning. So this is probably my absolute favorite. That's why I started with it. All right, and the next one is probably my second favorite. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about that one next. This is another massive pod, and these are about the size of a coconut. Uh, however, it has a really amazing texture on it, and this is actually a Brazil nut husk. So when you think of a Brazil nut, in your mind, this is the husk where all of those Brazil nuts actually live inside of when it's still attached to the tree. In fact, you can see the little sort of cutouts here. There's probably like eight uh, Brazil nuts that uh, live inside of each one of these husks. And when the Brazil nuts themselves are harvested, again, this is a byproduct that's left over in the rainforest of Brazil. Um, and usually just rots and decomposes. So um, these have been collected. Again, they are on their way. They have been imported from Brazil for us um, to feature hopefully in an upcoming My Aquarium box and also to post on our website. Uh, there is a little bit of size variation on these things. And so they sort of come in like a baseball to softball size. Um, sort of like a, a coconut equivalent. These things are good to go. They sink immediately and uh, they don't make a mess. They're, they're very woody. It's, it's like out of all of these, these are probably the most durable, uh, probably even more durable than a coconut would be. So very cool item here. They've got a clean chop on the top and um, yeah, these things again would act great as planters for aquarium plants and uh, make a great centerpiece for your tank. Brazil nut husks. Who would have thought? Pretty cool. All right, next one up is, for lack of a better name, we're calling this a trident pod just because it has sort of three sections here. Uh, I don't know the actual scientific name of these yet. Um, it isn't something that we have placed an order for yet, but they are pretty cool. Um, so far in my tests, in my aquariums, they have held up uh, decently well. And so uh, I wanted to share these with you because these go through a very dramatic change when they enter your aquarium. And this is something that's really cool to note about a lot of pods, seed pods, um, when you put them in water in your aquariums. A lot of these seed pods, um, when they are fresh and they're hanging from a tree, obviously they're closed. And then what happens is they dry out and they open up a lot of times, just like this, and then the seeds actually fall out. Now, when you rehydrate these by putting them back in an aquarium, what happens is they actually shut back up again. Um, just the way that these sort of formed in a closed manner, when you reintroduce that water, when you rehydrate these things, all of a sudden they want to close back up again. So these are wide open, but when you put them in an aquarium over a couple days, they actually start to close up again, which is crazy because of how wide open these actually are. Now, an important thing to note, all of these seed pods I'm basically testing these on my own aquariums. I don't really take anyone else's word on stuff like this, especially when it comes to, um, you know, if something is toxic or not for your fish, uh, if it's going to break down in your tank after a few days and make a total mess. Uh, I have found pods that fit both of those descriptions, things that will absolutely poison your fish and things that will absolutely break down over the course of a few days. So it's really important to me to test all of these things out <clears throat> for myself before we start to sell things like this. So these ones, I'm not 100% sure on yet. Uh, so far, they've turned out really well. One of my um, things that I like to do is just, uh, I, like I, try, I knock on them. I, I like, literally, I try to f like figure out how woody 
the pods themselves are. Because if it's woody, um, that means it won't decompose very quickly. And actually, if you smell it and there's no sort of like odors or like pine pitch or like any, any sort of like aroma coming from them, chances are pretty good that uh, it, it will probably be okay and last for a long time. But I always like to test them myself before introducing them uh, and giving them to anyone else. So that is the Trident Pod, for a lack of a better name. If you know the scientific name, please let me know because I'd rather call it by a scientific name. All right, next one up is the Jungle Pod. Again, this is not a scientific name, um, but these things, again, are super, super cool. And these are another great example of something that opens up um, when it's dried out and actually when you put it back in your tank they do tend to close up a little bit but not quite as much um, there is quite a bit of variation in terms of size like something like this is probably on the larger size and something like this is on the smaller side um, and they also vary a lot in terms of how open they are. Like this one is, is pretty wide open. Some of them will be like 180 degrees open. So this one is, is I don't know, like 90 degrees. Anyways, uh, some of them will be almost completely closed when you get them. So there's a lot of variation there. Some of them have like some really neat shapes. Like some of them are a lot um, more oblong and some of them are a lot more uh, round in shape. But these have a ton of character, these jungle pods. Uh, you can place them any which way in your aquascape and they're always going to look great. It's just one of those things, again, it's very woody. They sink pretty quick and uh, they just look great and they last for quite a while. Uh, something like this can put a lot of character into your foreground of an aquascape. It's something you can sort of use as a buffer between the front of your tank that might be wide open and uh, the areas in your tank that have more stones uh, or driftwoods or things like that. So jungle pods, again, very cool. And I believe these are actually like red in color when they're still attached to the tree and then they become brown and all of the seeds uh, sort of fall off as they dry out and uh, fall to the ground. So again, one of those things that would just be uh, waste, just like a, a byproduct that sits on the floor um, of a forest. And instead they're being collected uh, by local people in their local regions and um, they make great accents, great additions to aquariums. A lot of these things either come from like Brazil uh, or they come from like the Asia Pacific region and uh, it just depends, you know, where a tree is from. Next up, we have probably one of the most delicate pods of the bunch and these are called bell cups. And these things are delicate because of how thin the walls are. If we take a look at those, they've got really thin walls. And I would say these things may last for a couple months before they start to fall apart. And that's just the nature of um, the pod itself. It's not gonna last forever. It's nowhere near as thick as like a coconut uh, or something like that. So these are, are more of a disposable pod, but they're also extremely uh, affordable. So it is something you can replace. But the great thing about pods uh, that have sort of this cup shape is just how great a hide they make, a natural hide, something for your crayfish, something for your shrimp to hide in, uh, especially these little ones. They, uh, they're a little bit more durable just because uh, like the, the wall thickness is the same, but uh, they're smaller so they don't like crunch as easily. Uh, some of these bigger ones, if you put them in water for a few weeks and then pick them up, you could literally just like crush it uh, in your hand. So, um, you know, some of the smaller ones actually may hold up a little bit longer, but regardless, you know, whatever size critters you have on the bottoms of your tanks, you can sort of like half submerge these in your substrate and they make a great home for those guys to hide in. Um, these don't really make a mess other than when they completely fall apart. So 
after a few months you probably just want to pull them replace them and you'll be good to go but there is quite a variety uh, of sizes to these bell cup pods uh, this being probably on the on the very small side of things and this one being on the larger side of things it's a cool pod really inexpensive so it's worth playing around with but just keep in mind they are fairly delicate uh, in the grand scheme of things so uh, less less woody and certainly less robust all right let's look at some of the smaller pods because I think it's always good to get a good variety you can have really big pods really impressive pods but that doesn't always um, that's not always everything you need. Sometimes you just need some smaller stuff mixed in with the larger stuff in order to sort of complete your escape and to complete, um, you know, your collection of litter on the bottom of your tank. And I say litter in a very positive way because a lot of these things are found in the wild, they are found in jungles, they are found in waterways, all of the trees that overhang waterways uh, these things end up in the water and it ends up as part of the environment of all of these fish, all of these tropical fish that we keep uh, in our aquarium. So this stuff is very natural for a lot of these fish to actually come in contact with. Alright, this one's sort of a tongue twister. It's a Jacardania pod and um, I think these look really cool because it sort of has like this cat's eye appearance. Um, it's sort of like split down the middle. It's got this inside color and then this outside color. The back is a lot less remarkable. And I'm not 100% sure because all of these are like basically single sided. But I think how these go together is literally just like two of these uh, connected together. And when they dry up and fall off the tree, they must split because you can see, oops, you can see like it looks like the other half on this one uh, broke off here. So I haven't really found any complete specimens, but you do find quite a few that have sort of that other side of the tab uh, still attached. So these things are really cool because it's like, it's as thin as a leaf, but it's very woody in nature. And so these things will last for several months uh, if not longer, without falling apart, which is actually pretty difficult to find in something that is this thin. Like this is super thin, but it's it's very durable. Like it, like I can I can sort of press on this and it's not breaking in my hand. So it's very durable, even when it's saturated with water, it doesn't fall apart, and it does sort of hold its shape and hold its color fairly well. So you can imagine using these as sort of an accent in your aquarium. It has a lot of character to it. And again, they are really, really affordable. So be on the lookout for these. You might see them at some point, um, potentially in an upcoming My Aquarium box, but no spoilers, no spoilers. All right, what else do we have? We've got a number of different smaller sized seed pods to look at. And this one is called a Bakuli pod. These look very similar to like an acorn. If you live in the United States, acorns are all over the place. These look kind of similar to an acorn. However, you see they sort of open up in the middle. They split. And so these are attached, they're all attached to a tree. They sort of got like that acorn top to them, but then they split open and the seeds fall out. And then what you're left with is this Bakuli pod. And these things are really cool. Um, because again, it's one of those little things you can just sprinkle in your tank to give that extra little accent. And again, this is an example of a pod that looks one way when it's brand new, like this. They're open, right? But then as they rehydrate, they will actually close back up. 
So what they're going to look like a day after you put them in the tank versus what they look like a month or two down the line is very, very different. But again, they are very thick, they are very robust, they're woody, there's no like oils or anything on it which would interfere with the water quality in your tank. They're just a very clean, very cool option to add to your tank. So things like this, I love finding things like this. It's just so cool. And I wish there were more trees in the United States that were just more tro more tropical, you know, like just more more diverse, um, more exotic. You know, there's just there's so many cool trees with so many cool pods, but <laughs> most of them are located in other countries or, or overseas. So it can be difficult to find some of this stuff locally, and, and that's really what we're trying to do is uh, introduce a lot more of these locally so that they're easier to find and easier to put in your tanks. All right, that was the Bakuli pod. This is the Lattice pod. A lattice. A-L-A-T-U-S. And again, these are pretty similar to the ones we just looked at, the Bakulis, but these uh, are lighter in color, they're larger, and um, they're actually a little bit less dense, I would say. I think, I think these ones floated quite a bit longer than the Bakuli pods did. Um, but again, it's one of those things that looks this way right now with the opening, right? All the seeds have fallen out. But when you put it in the tank, these close right back up. You'll still be able to see sort of, you know, where the notches are, but they close right back up when you put them in a the tank. So again, it's a pretty cool option. You've got sort of these, uh, these stems, looks sort of like an acorn, but a lot more exotic. And these ones actually get pretty big. Um, I would say this one's probably on the bigger side, and this one's probably on the smaller side of things. But very cool, very cool little pod. All right, and one more pod that we have to look at before we go take a look at what these look like inside the aquarium. This is a pear pod. I don't know if these are actually from like a pear tree. I don't think that they are, but that's what they're called. And they are pretty cool. Um, they've got this like spotted texture on them. You see that outside has like a spotted texture. And it's got sort of two halves to the pod, which again is, is sort of like a, an interesting feature when you sort of take it out of the, the bag uh, when they're still dry. But as with basically every other pod we've looked at, over time, when you rehydrate these, they will close up in your tank. So some of this character will disappear after you put it in the tank, which is why it's really important to know what it looks like before and after you put it in a tank. But these are actually pretty easy to rip in half if you so choose. So here's like half of one. And you can just pull them apart if you want. And uh, that way, obviously, they won't close <laughs> when you put them in your tank. But these have a, a lot of character just as they are. Even after they close, they do have a lot of character. It's sort of like that medium-sized pod. They're very um, thick and I expect these should probably last quite a long time uh, in your aquarium and give it sort of uh, an extra layer of texture and an extra layer of like mottled, spottedness. It's a pretty cool little pod there. That is the pear pod. All right, guys, before we go and jump over to the tank so we can see what all these look like, after they spent a month underwater, make sure to go down in the comments and let me know what your favorite pod is that you saw out of this bunch of pods. 
I'm going to pick one winner in two weeks, and I'm going to send you whatever your favorite pod was. So just leave it in the comments, tell me what your favorite pod was, and in two weeks I'll randomly pick a winner and send them to you. All you have to do is live in the United States and uh, be 18 years or older in order to win. All right, let's go take a look at what these look like in an aquarium. All right, guys, now we are over at our test tank, and we've got a lot of those same pods in this tank. So let's take a look at them one by one and see how they fared after a month or more in an aquarium environment. Now, our monkey pot pod here, it's kind of hard to see inside this thing, but it is going to create a little bit of a mess with some debris as we start to hollow this out and get some of that more um, soft matter out of the inside of this thing. I should probably actually take this out and like I said scoop it with a spoon until I'm down to just the woody surface but I do want to see how long it takes before all of that sort of uh, falls away and you're left with just the woody monkey pot pod but this thing is massive in the tank it looks great uh, it does create a little bit of a biofilm on the outside which is usually a good thing for like shrimp tanks but um, this thing does also float for quite a while it takes a while to rehydrate so this is definitely one that you probably want to boil before putting in a tank because otherwise it may float for a week or more um, you can also put a stone, like a large stone, on the inside of it, which will help it sink to the bottom, and that will help uh, the air to get out of there and for it to rehydrate faster because of the increased water pressure from it being on the bottom of the tank versus the top of the tank. All right, here is our Brazil nut husk, and this thing is very similar to a coconut in that you can just drop this in the tank straight away it sinks it looks great it's very woody very thick and it will basically last forever at least that's what i've seen so far and it's been in here for about a month so looks great uh, i really like these and i think it's something that will work really well in the long term uh, for your tanks and your aquascapes so it's not just something that you throw in and it lasts for, you know, a few months. It's something that will last for a very, very long time. All right, here's our Trident pod. And as I mentioned, these things close way back up. Uh, if you remember what this looked like beforehand, now it's almost completely sealed itself back up. But it does sink after a while. Um, again, one of those things you can boil and it will sink a lot faster but really cool thing here and even though this is closed up most of the way if you have shrimp they can still get in there and that actually makes a really good hiding place for your shrimp and your very small fry to hide out in uh, because they feel really safe and there's really nothing else that can get in there so it's not just for decorating a tank it can actually help out uh, some of your fish all right, here is our jungle pod. And this one has been in the tank for several months, actually. You can see the color has darkened a little bit. We've got some biofilm sort of accumulating on the outside. This one doesn't look fantastic, but it is one of those things that, um, you know, it, it doesn't really change a whole lot over time. Uh, it probably closed a little bit and as it rehydrates it is a little bit more flexible a little bit more malleable i would say you know if i wanted to like tear this thing apart i could because it it's now rehydrated it's it's a lot softer than it started out as but if this is just something that sits on the bottom of your tank it's something that should probably last for quite a while and i don't really have anything picking at these so this is just sort of like the crud that has built up on this thing over the last month or so but cool cool pod I like the jungle pods I like how much character they have all right next up here's our bell cup 
And these things do not age all that well. Uh, as you can see, we've sort of got some, some modeling on these. Some of it's algae. Some of it's just the, the pod itself just sort of breaking down over time. And as I said, these become very soft and very brittle um, once they rehydrate. As you can see, I can basically just crush these things in my hands um, very easily. So this is, like I said, it's probably the most delicate pod that we're going to take a look at right now. And it is sort of a more disposable pod. So I really wouldn't leave these in your tanks for more than a month. Um, maybe two months max before they're going to start to fall apart on their own and you, you probably want to get rid of them before they start to fall apart otherwise they're just going to make a mess all right next up we've got our jacadinia pods and again these are the ones that had sort of that two texture to them the back side is sort of one color and then the inside is sort of the the two tone and you can see it holds on to that two tone over time. These are probably two or three months old at this point, and they are still very stiff. Uh, they're not falling apart, but they do sort of wash out in coloration a little bit. Uh, I believe these sink relatively quickly. And so, if you want, you know, if you're going for maximum aesthetic appeal, you could replace these over time, but they do hold up quite well on their own. Uh, I think it would just be a matter of personal preference if you wanted the ones that look a little bit fresher versus these that are sort of like a little bit um, more muted after they've been in the water for so long. But regardless, I think they look cool. Uh, it's something that's going to last a lot longer than a leaf would. A leaf is going to break down really quickly within a matter of weeks and these will last months and months and months and they look sort of similar. Uh, in shape and size so cool option there all right next up we got the bakulis the bakuli pods these are our tropical acorn type pod and uh, the one thing I'll note on these like I said uh, previously is that these close right up they're completely closed up um, it looks totally different once you put these in the water and they've rehydrated they almost look like little uh, beans um, and they actually look a lot more like regular acorns now that they've closed up. So this isn't something that uh, shrimp are going to live in. These are something. This is something that's just completely sealed uh, once they've rehydrated and sunk to the bottom of your tank. But regardless, they're very cool. They're very cheap, and it's something that's really easy to use uh, to add a little bit of character to the bottoms of your tanks. All right, now we're on to the Alatus pods. And again, these have closed right up as well. You can see all of the lines where they were wide open as they were dry. And now that they're rehydrated again, they just look like more like a typical uh, acorn, but larger than the Bakulis and a lot lighter in color. So it really just depends what you're going for. And then last but not least, we've got our pear pods. And yes, once again, they are completely sealed up, completely closed. And they do look pretty cool. Oblong shape. You can see they maintain their sort of mottled coloration and appearance. Um, I expect that these will start to slough off some of the exterior layers of the pod over time because they're not super dense like some of the other pods but regardless they're cool all the same that is a look at all of our pods after they've been in the water for over a month all right guys and that's gonna do it for this week's video we took a look at a lot of seed pods today and this is something that i am super excited to continue working on throughout the year. Seed pods, I think they've gotten not enough press in the aquarium hobby. Not enough people are using them, and it is definitely an area that I hope to see a lot more growth in in the future. 
there's just so many cool trees, so many cool seed pods out in the world, so many cool things we can be putting in our tanks to make them look more beautiful, to create more habitats for our critters, and just overall something new to look at in your tank. There's nothing wrong with driftwood, there's nothing wrong with aquascaping stone, I just think adding that extra layer of stuff inside your tank, on the bottom of your tank, just makes it look absolutely amazing. So hopefully this video has inspired you to work on some of your own aquascapes, some of your own tanks, and maybe incorporate seed pods in your next project. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out myaquariumbox.com if you want to help support this channel. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.